Welcome to the next video session for SQL Server 2012 test lab. In earlier video, we prepared Windows Server 8 Hyper-V server and configured basic properties, networking, apparent virtual hard disk as well as creating a differential hard disk. And then we created one virtual machine using the differential hard disk. And in this video, we will use that machine to configure as a Windows Domain Controller. So let's start with that. My name is Prakash and you can connect me on my blog sklfeatures.com. You can subscribe and comment as well as feel free to uh, connect me on Twitter or Facebook. So these are the topics we already covered for SQL Server 2012 lab. We have a test configuration for low power SQL Server test lab if you are building from scratch or you can use your existing machine to configure a Windows Server 8 Hyper-V lab to boot from VHD. We configured Windows Server 8 Hyper-V in the previous session. Now we'll be working on domain controller. Here are the key configuration of domain controller. That's the name of the VM these are the IP addresses so let's go ahead and start configuring so here is the Hyper-V manager I am connected to the machine on local domain we have an currently it is configured with IPv4 let's go and see what's the IP address for this machine so I go back to Hyper-V manager click on networking on last tab and then you can see 10.0.0.13 you can use 10.0.0.13 to connect remote desktop to this machine First step, let's change IP address to be static and configure it as we planned. Disable IPv6, select IP address. If you have 192.168.1.1 1 .1, that would be one if you have another address. Down, click close. You lose network connection if you're on RDP. Okay, IP address is changed successfully. Let's change the computer name. We're configuring a Windows 8 server DC. We'll give the same name. Okay, machine is rebooted. Name looks good. IP looks good to configure domain controller now. Click on dashboard, add roles and features. Click next. Click next. Click next. Select Active Directory Domain Services. Click Add Features. Next, install Telnet client if you need to do some troubleshooting. It's not necessary. Next, click install. Click close. You can check status here by coming at the notification. Installation is started. So as you can see, installation completed. Now there is a post deployment configuration option is there. Click on promote the server to domain controller. Click on add a new forest since it's a test lab. For this exercise, we'll use sklfeatures.local, the domain name. And to password, select domain to Windows 2008. Ignore that message, click next, click next, click next, next. next. 
keep an eye on the installation process here and you can see the status of installation is changing. Okay, machine is rebooted. Click on local server. Check the server name as well as domain name is good. Click on the new service up here, here, ADDS. Right click on the server name, click administrative center. What we'll do is we'll add a couple of users to it. New user. I'll keep name HV admin. Keep the values as simple as it is. Uh, I'll be keeping one user HV admin. Say OK. Right click on users. Right click properties. Choose other password options, never expired, click OK. We want to promote HV admin as the domain administrator. Select domain admins, click OK. So we created the basic user which we'll be using for rest of the activity. He'll be the domain admin. Close this window. Click on DNS. Right click and click on DNS manager. Click on forward lookup zone. Span. Check forward lookup zone. You should be seeing the SQL features dot local. If you do not see a SQL features dot local here, right click here, configure a DNS server, click next, create forward lookup zone, click choose all the default options, paste SQL features dot local here, click next, next, next. There you go. Click on SQL features dot local and you should be able to see host A entries. This is all we need as a domain controller to test out things what we want to test. Now let's validate domain controller. Open PowerShell, type NSLOOKUP SQL features dot local. This looks perfectly okay. And let's look, so SQL features dot local is responding to TAN 0099. Any other machine you're configuring before you're trying to add it to the domain SQL features dot local, make sure that you're able to do NS lookup to SQL features local and you're able to see exactly what we are seeing here. That way you know that domain controller is accessible. Let's use Hyper-V to create one virtual machine and validate it to add it to the domain controller. I'm on Hyper-V server. First we'll create another hard, hard disk, differential disk. Click next. Keep the option differencing. Say next. Browse. So we created Windows SRV DC. And now we'll create another folder for the virtual machine. Let's see what was the name. As per our demo setup, uh, VM2 name would be QDC DB21 and the IP would be 28. QDC DB21. Select folder. Click next. Select the parent disk. Next, finish. 
we created a new differential disk. Now let's create a virtual machine to configure with the disk. Same, use dynamic memory. Since this is going to be a SQL Server, I'll change startup memory to 1 gig. Click Next. Same adapter. Click Next. Use existing hard disk. Browse. Next. Finish. Connect. Start. Okay, the node is booted up. Skip. Accept. Next. Enter password. Okay. Click action control to delete okay machine is rebooting let's go to hyper-v click on hyper-v click on hyper-v manager qdc21 click networking ip is 19 we'll have to change it to 28 okay We are on QDC DB21. Click on local server. We'll have to change the machine name. We'll have to change the IP address. First, we'll change IP address. Properties. Remove IPv6. It would be 10 0, 0, 28. Now it's important to understand the IP address and prefer DNS server we are adding here. Once you put it there, it's able to talk to domain controller. Click OK. Close. You lose the connection if you're an RDP. IP is changed, but it's not reflecting here. Click on Refresh. Perfect. The IP is good. Now let's change the machine name. QDCDB21. Click OK. Now at this point, rather than restart, I'm looking to shut down this server. And I'm going to take a snapshot of it. So that after this point, we'll restart it to the domain. And this is the point you want to take a snapshot of your Windows domain, as well as all the nodes once you have it ready. So that if you have to roll back at any point of time, you can roll back to that snapshot and your v VMs are back at this point. So let's go ahead and shut down this VM. Settings, power, shut down, continue. Okay, this is your domain controller. Shut this down as well. A little bit cryptic to get that shut down charms if you are having problems you can press the shortcut for problems in getting the charms then you can just press window key plus C and the charms will show up okay so you can see both the machines are off right click snapshot this will create a snapshot click on DC right click snapshot 
I prefer this method as the snapshots are very fast. It's already done. Both snapshots are done. We are going to restart both machines again. And this time we'll add QDCDB21 to the domain W8SRVDC at SQL feature start. We are back on QDCDB21 after snapshot. We have rebooted the server. Click on local server. Now let's add it to the domain. As I said, you should verify before you add it to the domain. Start Windows PowerShell. And as look up, SQL features dot local. Perfect. As we were expecting, this is a nose and it's able to find SQL features dot local. You have the right machine name. Click on change, change it to domain. Type SQL features dot local. And it's asked for authentication. We have created a user named HVAdmin. So let's use that. Hey, welcome to SQLfeatures.local domain. That's all what is needed. Click OK, do the restart, and you were able to add a new machine to the domain. You can come to the domain, click on SQL features, double click here and verify that the computer account is here. So you can see QDCDB21 is visible here. It's been added to the domain and that completes our today's session. So remember again, here is the configuration we are using for the future examples so as long as you are aligned to these configurations and close to it you'll be able to finish most of the configurations without any troubles based on this configuration we created a skill features dot local domain we created a user hv admin we have created a node with 10 qdcdb21 so we have completed this part in next video, we'll talk about how to configure iSCSI target on the same domain controller so that so in your text exercise, you can use iSCSI targets and test out the cluster configurations where you need iSCSI as a storage, shared storage, where you need iSCSI as a shared storage. Well, thank you very much for attending this session. You can visit my blog where you will find this post and put down any comments there. That's the best place for me to look and I'm usually able to respond in a couple of days. Uh, you can subscribe me there as well. Uh, on my YouTube channel, you can see all the videos and the sequence. Here's my Twitter account and Facebook. I look forward to hear from you.